Hi, this presentation is to give you some background information on the process of working with a scribe during your exams. The information is taken from the policy, guidelines and procedures for the granting of reasonable accommodations in examinations to students with disabilities. The policy has been developed by the Disability Advisors Working Network, DAWN, to ensure standardised assessment procedures for students with disabilities in higher education in Ireland. So, what is a scribe? Well, a scribe writes down or types a candidate's dictated answers to questions in an exam. They should have a good working knowledge of the subject matter being examined and ideally be a graduate in the same discipline as that of the exam. They will be able to produce an accurate record of the candidate's answers by writing legibly or typing accurately. But they will not give factual help or offer suggestions or advice on how to organise responses. So who uses a scribe? Scribes are only granted to candidates who cannot produce written communication by any other means, so they may have physical impairments that affect writing, tire easily, have muscle weakness, have limited dexterity, or have severe dyslexia, and the definition of this is outlined in the DAWN guidelines referred to at the start. And there is also another reason why a student may be given permission to use a scribe, and that's where a candidate has had a recent accident that impacts on their writing or typing of an exam. So I presume that scribing is done in a separate place to other exams. What about additional time? Yes, exam venues are usually located in small tutorial rooms. Additional time of 10 minutes per hour will be provided. Sometimes the rooms can get a little stuffy, so it's a good idea to bring some water in to stay hydrated. This will help you both to stay alert. The exam scribe also acts as the invigilator and that means that the scribe needs to be aware of the instructions for invigilator issued by the examinations office and to take these into consideration when timing an exam. So does the student need to be at the venue earlier than everyone else? No, the student just arrives at the same time as for any other venue. The scribe needs to allow a half hour before the exam starts to go to the examinations office and collect the script and equipment. When the exam is complete, all material will need to be returned to the examinations office by the scribe. In fact, an extra 30 minutes at e each end of the exam needs to be allowed for. And do they get a chance to practice before all this happens? That's compulsory. If the scribe and student have not worked together previously, they must arrange two practice sessions prior to the exam, and they must sign off that the practice sessions have been completed before the exam takes place. So, are there any other arrangements the student needs to know about? Well, the exam session will be recorded on a digital recorder. This is for the examiner's use when there are any concerns about the exam script. This is very important as it protects both student and scribe and there is a clear record of what was said and what was written. The recorder is positioned in front of both the student and scribe so that both voices are clearly audible. If necessary, the scribe should describe what is happening for the benefit of the recording. For example, a student correcting typed script, the arrival of a lecturer, or stopping the tape for a toilet break, etc. And does the student bring the laptop? No, the laptop will be provided by the examinations office. They are kept for just exam purposes. For handwritten exams, it is the student's responsibility to provide the pens and other writing equipment, but remember, black is the easiest colour to read. So when the scribe and student have been assigned and they have arranged to meet for the practice sessions, what needs to be covered during these? A number of things are covered, but the most important one is so that both get used to working together. The following should also be covered. Time management. At the beginning, the scribe advises the student of the duration of the exam, the number of questions to be answered and the approximate time to be given to each question. They also announce clearly the starting time and the finishing time, emphasising that time limits must be respected to ensure equality. At the practice, the student and scribe can decide how the student likes to manage their time. Do they dictate it all and come back towards the end to make corrections, or do they like to do corrections as they go along? They talk about seating. For example, it may be best to sit side by side at a large table rather than opposite each other so that the student can read what has been written. Consider which hands the scribe and student write with so as to sit at the appropriate side. 
the digital recorder should be placed between the scribe and student so each can be clearly heard. In some cases, a student will require the paper to be read to them, with questions being re-read as required. This should be arranged at the practice sessions. Time is allowed for rest breaks, but breaks cannot exceed the additional time already provided. If the student needs a rest or toilet break, the scribe will have to request the floating invigilator to accompany the student to the bathroom. The floating invigilator is only available during the main annual exam period. If the exam is scheduled outside this period, then the scribe will be required to accompany the student to the bathroom. The scribe will need to bring the laptop, scripts and digital recorder with them. Students should try to give the scribe adequate notice if they require a toilet break so that there is time to save documents and pack up. If a core component of assessment is that of competence in spelling, grammar and written expression, it is not possible to disregard these elements, for example, languages or journalism. In other subjects testing written communication skills, including English or Irish, the scribe will be allowed, but the student will be assessed only on those aspects of written communication which he or she can demonstrate independently, such as the use of language and effective grammatical presentation. As most students who use a scribe will have used one before and will have their own approach, are there some specifics that need to be adhered to? There are indeed specifics. Let me outline these now. Students who use a scribe are not able to write for the full duration of the exam, but they may write some of it themselves. Many will write their own essay plans or mind maps. These should, of course, be included in the sealed envelope and returned to the examinations office. Scribes can only write or type what has been dictated to them by the student, i.e. what is written on the page must correspond to what can be heard on the recording. When the lecturer or examiner comes to the venue, the scribe should always ask for their phone number in case the student has any problems with the exam paper later on. Remember to immediately note on the tape who enters the exam venue and who leaves the venue. If using a computer, ensure that the computer is set to save work regularly every three to five minutes. Go to Tools, Options, Save and select the required time. How can the student be sure that everything will be saved and ready for printing off? A memory stick will be given with the laptop for ease of printing off the answers at the end of the exam. The scribe saves the answers to both the hard disk and the memory stick during the exam. This will also protect work completed if there is any mishap with the laptop. Use double spacing when typing the answers. This helps to ensure clarity and is easier for the student to read when reviewing the answers. Prepare the answers for printing. Add a header and footer showing the student's exam number, exam paper identification number and subject. Some scribes like to start to prepare this information if they have time before the start of the exam. Others do it while the student is reading the question paper. It is also a good idea to add page numbers as this will prevent any confusion if the pages should become detached from each other. Insert a page break between the different answers or set up a new file for each answer. This is particularly helpful when more than one person is marking the exam. So what is the process for transferring the answers from the laptop to the paper? Is this done after the end of the exam finishing time? Yes, it is. This will not use up any of your extra time. When the exam is complete, instructions and arrangements for printing off the answers will be issued to the scribe by the examinations office. The student will check that all the answers are printed off and are ready to be submitted. And one last thing. What happens if a student becomes ill? If the student should become ill during the exam, the scribe will follow the procedure outlined in the instructions for invigilators provided by the examinations office. See reference to this below in the section entitled Additional Information About Working as a Scribe. Scribes should be familiar with the instructions for invigilators in special venues. To work as invigilators, most scribes will already be registered with the examinations office. Where a scribe has not already attended invigilator training, these instructions are available from the examinations office. The rate of pay reflects the additional time required for preparing and finishing the exam. Allow 30 minutes before the exam for collecting the paper and equipment from the examinations office and arriving at the venue with an additional 30 minutes for printing answers, receiving confirmation from the student that all exam material is printed, 
the completion of the examination office documentation and delivery of exam materials to the examinations office. The following points should be noted. Be punctual. Allow plenty of time to collect the exam materials from the examinations office and ensure the room is ready before the exam is due to begin. Be relaxed. The student will have the normal anxieties that every student has before an exam, so it is important to present yourself as relaxed and comfortable as possible. Students may experience blanks. Try not to make them more self-conscious about this panic. Maybe encourage them to read over the last paragraph. If they're becoming stressed, suggest that they take a short break. Adhere to exam procedures. Complete relevant details on answer books. Bring any unusual occurrence or incident to the attention of staff in the examinations office. Always take a mobile phone from the examinations office or have their number saved in your phone just in case there are any problems with the venue, a student becomes ill or other issues arise. Exam scribes, when sourced and managed through disability support services, are expected to work in accordance with the terms of registration for educational support workers. It is a condition of this role that you familiarise yourself with the following. The institution's safety regulations, the institution's policy on dignity and respect, and the scribe should also be familiar with the institution's code of conduct for users of the computing facility.